not shut up and dribble. The champ is here. I must be the greatest. The champ is here. I'm going to continue to stand with the people. The champ is here. I will, I will not, not lose. lose. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with we. My name is EJ, and I got my man. MH. He is the DB of the show, and we are Black in Sports, giving a voice to the culture that won't shut up and dribble. Today, we're bringing you back inside for a special edition of the locker room. Um, you know, wrapping things up. Uh, MH, you ready to do this? Yes, sir. All right, so today, man, we want to talk about Mr. Antonio Brown, A.B., after uh, week 17 and uh, his his early departure uh, from the game. And, uh, you know, just, um, you know, bring it inside the locker room and it's a better platform than ours to kind of talk about it and um, just get the conversation going. So, MH, uh, how do you want to start out? I want to get your thoughts on it to start. Um, I'm definitely, you know, I don't know if it's now, just after what we've been through with, uh, Black Lives Matter and just the seeing the deaths of, you know, black men and um, just where we've been. And then just kind of like our platform, you know, we always um, look to trend to a positive message. You know, we don't really do bashing. You know, we have jokes and things like that, which, you know, is just a part of the culture. Right. You know, um, so with all that being said, man, I just hope he gets help. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, the games and then, you know, you kind of start hearing the, the rumor mill about like what's going on with AB, AB, he starts trending. And then like, you know, you start seeing the videos and things like that. And you're like, no, this can't be real. Like what's going on now. And to still not really have the full, full story, um, you know, it's just really concerning. So instead of like blasting him and, and going in on, you know, what, um, how much of a downfall he's had since he's left the Steelers and like, you know, what was kind of going on. Cause that's where it really started. Right. So as a Steelers, you know, fan and, um, you know, knowing what he, what he was and what he did for, um, for our team and to kind of see this stuff kind of continue to carry on, you know, you hope that he was in a better place. And then after the, the recent alleged, um, vac vaccine card scandal, um, and getting yet another chance, you know, you, you were just hoping that like, okay, you know, he's back on the grind. Um, you know, he's back there. And then, then to hear this, it was just shocking and it's just sad. All in all, it was sad. Yeah. I guess to, to follow up, uh, what you're saying, um, I guess to kind of help tell the whole story, I guess, from that point of him being the Steelers and we can kind of just go through a quick timeline of, I guess where we're at today. So December 2018, week 17 of that year, uh, he was deactivated. Yeah, I guess he had an argument or something with Big Ben, and they let him do that. That followed up with February 2019, uh, met with the owner, and they decided to part ways. March of that year, the next month, he got traded to the Raiders. Uh, July 2019, we all know what happened with the, the feet thing. Um, August, it wasn't COVID feet. Let's get what, it. What wasn't a COVID toe, but it was something. <laughs> it wasn't COVID toe. It's it was a, like cousin of it. Some something, something like something that. Something else, right? This, <laughs> that's some shit. Uh, but August 2019, he had to remember the helmet old thing that he couldn't get the the right helmet to fit or whatever the new one is and all that kind of stuff. And he wanted his legacy helmet. Yeah, get it overridden. September 2019, he was released by the Raiders. Two days later, he signed with the Patriots. Mom, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> Granny, I'm free. Granny, I'm free. <laughs> I always, that's one of my favorite memes. I, I don't care. Uh, September 2019, he's accused of sexual assault, ex trainer, then released by the Patriots September 20th of that same year. Some felony charges in January of 2020, suspended for eight games by the NFL, July 2020. October 2020, signed with the Bucks, wins the championship January 2021, resigns with the Bucks May 2021. December, as you mentioned, vaccination card thing, um, but it's back in. As we check January 2022, January 2nd, 2022, 
uh, this latest uh, thing from AB. So I guess we 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 had all to say that uh, he's been in the news a lot lately, uh, for good and bad, I guess. I mean, um, you talk about uh, what 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 time point in that kind of uh, timeline that you went through? When was his music career? That was in, was that a uh, yeah, I, I didn't. That wasn't one of the bullet points that, <laughs> that I put in the there. You put it there. Maybe we'll get back but, to uh, that. But whenever yeah. he went out to New Orleans to try to get a deal from from Peyton, as he as he mentioned in one of his lyrics, yes, um, from Sean Payton. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't. Um, I guess I don't necessarily think uh, I've seen you know the CTE things, and we we don't we can't really know what's going on and somebody's mind i've seen uh some of the things about a cry for help i i don't really think it's any of it um i think ab operates what he knows what he's doing i think we all know somebody whether it's in our family or friends that's just like yo why you keep messing stuff up bro like chill out like and i just think ab is i think ab is that guy um kind of diving this is not to bash ab but this is almost understanding i guess so there's several versions of the story, as you mentioned, and some of the details not fully out. But I'm going to stick with the version that makes most sense to me. Okay, let's go. With um, that. So AB didn't practice Thursday or Friday. This is fact uh, this week because he had an ankle soreness. Um, and then and during the game, he had played a little bit, had a couple targets, had a couple catches. Um, but in the third quarter, he's just like, "Yeah, my body's not feeling whatever." Uh, I'm not going in. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going in. And you know, staff Buccaneer staff says, "Hey, man, you going in?" He's like, "No, nah, I'm not going in. If my ankle not feeling right, I, I'm not feeling it." And they're like, "Hey, man, you don't go in. <laughs> you might as well just quit." And he's like, "All right, I'm going to quit." And he does that. Um, goes there. I, I say I believe that version because for one, um, we saw a guy in with, that used to play with the San Antonio Spurs, Kawhi Leonard. Who also said, yeah, my, my leg is hurting. And the training staff was like, nah, you good to play. And he's like, nah, my quad really hurts. And he didn't play at all, right? Now, he didn't take off his jerseys, but he kind of did the same thing. Um, a little bit he didn't, different. But yeah, a little okay. different, but he did the same thing. He stopped getting his hair braided and uh, <laughs> he didn't play for the Spurs, right? And then he, you know, played for a different team. The Raptors won a championship. So I think as as former athletes or just people in general, what you – what you can't do is kind of tell somebody how they feel physically, right? And and tell them they're feeling some type of way and where you're not in their body. So I, for that reason, I can kind of understand being upset. Uh, I don't know if uh, the way to move was to throw your pads down and throw your uh, gloves and <laughs> shirt in the stands. The but strip. I'm not AB. I'm not AB. The dude, the dude strip. Like, yeah. you were wearing a plain black shirt. It wasn't like it, the shirt said Buccaneers on it, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not Antonio Brown, and everybody shows their emotions a certain type of way. I just think Antonio Brown is a guy that uh, is a little extra. Um, and if you try to show him up, he's going to show you back up, and he can be a little bit more petty than what you can be. Um, and I just think that's Antonio Brown, to be honest. So um, I don't. I don't know if it's a cry for help. I don't think it's a mental illness. I just think he's just being him. <laughs> So, okay, let's take him being him as baseline for this segment of this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, don't you think that's not healthy, though? I mean, there's ways that we have to, that we function in society, and don't you think that's a little off? Maybe, um, but we all know that, you know, sometimes your worth is, can be determined by how many commas or zeros are behind your uh you know, your name and we all I think the saying is uh, money doesn't money, just a, a, whatever it is. It's just a version of what you already are. Right. So maybe he's just a, he's already a kind of guy that, hey, I'm going to be more petty than you. Um, and because I have more money to my name, I'm going to have this platform to be even more petty. Right. And I guess attention. Well, does, can he be, have, does he have a lot of money? Because like I wanted to yeah. pull it up before we got on, but. He forfeited a lot of money by just leaving. Like he had like one more catch would have got him like, you know, a couple thousand or more. Yeah, bucks. it's about and, in total about a million dollars. Is it a million? Um, did you, did yeah. you see that poster? Just read up on it. Yeah. So yeah, like I mean, I don't, 
I don't know how much money that you need to say when you be like, I'm gonna be a petty enough that I don't need your hundred dollars. I mean, excuse me, your your, yeah. your your million. Like he's not balling like that with all I, his. Yeah, yeah I don't know if he's. Just, I don't think he's Jeff Bezos at all. Facts. Um, uh, but I, I don't think he's Miles Hayes either, right? <laughs> 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 I, I don't think he's necessarily living paycheck to paycheck either, right? right. So I, I think he has some kind of stature behind his name. I mean, there's been other stuff like you know he not he's not paying for like a nutritionist or whoever's cooking for him, and this person wants to sue him now because he's like a a b where my money at? And he's like, right? Yo, I shot you out on uh, Instagram. What else you want me to do? I'm not paying. <laughs> <laughs> I just think he's just. I just think he's just a petty individual, man. And I, I hate to make it that simple. I just, I just, I'm kind of that's where he's at with it. I don't know if it's that much deeper. I, man, I just side of him having the platform. Okay, so I, I give you that, but there's a lot of petty people. Like Jordan was petty. Mm-hmm. He did like, and and it's not to say that everybody has to act a certain way, man. Correct. Totally, totally get that. But my my thing is like something's legit. Like when you piece all the things together, right? Because everybody can act out, right? So especially when you come talk about an athlete in their body, right? Like they're getting more specific about, like you said, the Kawhi was a definite, you know, good good um analogy or, or reference point because you got to, you know, Clay, right, and and Durant maybe have came back early and they talked about how that looked right like they even talking about baker and how his play the you know regressed this season when they were supposed to be you know top of the afc with the talent that they had on the team but you know his body was banged up and he played through it so when you talk about an athlete and their concerns with their body um that's definitely a big deal but it's still a place of employment and you have to act accordingly like if we get down to the brass tacks of everything um you can say he's a different individual, but he's still at a job function. Like he's going to a job that has certain rules and perspectives and, and, and things like that. And if someone can't work within that confine of that system, um, either, well, one, they will no longer work there or, or two, <laughs> you know, two, they need to find some other kind of, you know, forms of income, you know, but three, like something's definitely up. Like, I, I just don't think that you can just, I don't feel that it's just something you could just credit to be like, oh, he's just an idiot. Or, excuse me, not even an idiot. Um, he just act out. He's petty. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. I, I, I think there are rules <laughs> in order to every situation that you got to kind of follow for, you know, if you want to be employed there. Um, not going into the vaccination process, but a lot of different organizations and companies across the, the country has kind of made that like, hey, you know, you do what you got to do or you won't be working here. Right. So, right. Um, I think there's those rules are, those where decisions have to be made. Right. Yeah. So. There, there's things that you have to adhere to. Um, but I, like, I don't think AB is like the first and he probably won't be the last athlete that does petty things or acts out or wants to prove a point in a very, uh, you know, uh, national or I guess a spotlighted type of way. I mean, we can go back to the Kobe Bryant refusing to shoot little different, but he refused to shoot in a game seven to prove a point, right? And they were like, "Wow, Kobe, why are you not shooting? You know, like this is a, this is a national television. This is a playoff game. Why are you trying to prove a point now and show everybody else up? Um, a little different, but to my point, I'm, I'm saying like I, I – What think, was his reason? Do we remember what Kobe's what reason Kobe was? Re I don't know if we no. ever figure out what the reason was, was, but yeah. he was definitely trying to prove a point. Um you know, for other in another situation, you know, Goat James have had some, you know, he he didn't he didn't shoot or whatever that place was in 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 the finals against the Mavericks in uh, twenty ten or twenty eleven, whenever that was. So, yeah. um, I, like I said, I don't think AB is the first or last person to kind of do, you know, something. Uh, I guess people that could talk about of being kind of showing somebody up or just know, something man. weird. I don't know. So yeah. Nick, shout out to Nick, who's one of uh, the fans of the show. And he commented on the post that kind of really got a lot of buzz about this, of getting him help or, and he just said he's a knucklehead and like, you could be a knucklehead and, and, and you know, that time is over, but I, I still think, you know, there's definitely cause of concern. And he did take some hits when he was with the, with the Steelers, like when he was playing, I think Bontez Burfick was one of them that he got knocked out mm -hmm. uh, right before a playoff game. 
And he took some other like big shots when he was still a uh, Steelers wide receiver. He got knocked out the game. I think it was twice in that one season. Uh, he sure. had a couple concussions. Um, and I know you're not a big proponent or belief of CTE. Um, not in that, just, not in this case, no. But the other point is family, right? Like there's trauma that you know people go through, and, and has he ever healed any of that trauma? Now we've talked about that because trauma goes from different levels of spectrums, right? Like. Did he mess up what he had a good thing with the Steelers, right? Like, where could he have been, the beef he had with Juju and all of that stuff? Like, was it – did he mess up? Because, like, in public, we all act like everything is good. We put shit on our shoulders and we march forward. But, in you know, in the meantime and between times when we're in them quiet spaces, you know, he had to be real with himself. Like, was that a good move, right? Like, you know, him and Le'Veon Bell, right? Like, looking back <laughs> – what's going on to it where like tonight we see Ben being celebrated. And of course we can get into, you know, color of his skin position whatever. or all that stuff, whatever, Correct. but still um, how he was celebrated and how he was thought of with that organization versus now Le'Veon Bell, who's like been bouncing ever since then, who, if he was still there, um, I think he would have had a, a different kind of track road and career. Same with AB. So is he still dealing with trauma with that? not having any family, right? Like his grand, his granny, who's like, who knows like what care she provides or what care he provides her. So where's his stability? Where's his support? Where's his role models? Where's, you know, the people we go to, you know, the fact that like when he went to Tampa Bay, he was living with Tom, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I feel some type of way about that story too. And, you know, I don't want to make Tom Brady the Messiah for letting AB use a room for a couple of days. So <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Um, we, I mean, there, there could be some issues that we just don't know about that maybe he's dealing with and, you know, um, you know, kind of acting out. I, I also think it's just kind of, you know, a little bit of the nature of the position. I mean, let's face it. AB plays a very dependent position, Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're a person that wants to be in control of much, which I think AB probably does, um, and you can't control something, whether that be via your body or just targets in general, because it's a very dependent position, uh, maybe you can boil over. Um, I'm not in no means kind of defending AB. Like, I, I think there's better ways to do things. Um, I just don't think it's a cry for help, I guess. And that's just my opinion of it. I just think, um, sort of like we were saying, I, just think he's kind of a knucklehead and he's just a guy that likes being petty and does stuff. So I, we, I and like you think about that. like um Colin Cowherd always talks about the wide receiver, right? Is icing on the cake. And you know, you said it's a dependent position, but if you go through like all of the interesting wide receivers, current and past, right? Like you look at a uh, Keyshawn Johnson, right? <laughs> and the stuff that he did in the Ocho Cinco and mm -hmm. Uh, even Terrell, right? Like, I think he's doing push ups and sit ups and crunches and army fatigues with no shirt <laughs> in the front of his house. In the front so, of the house. Yeah. In the front of the house, man. And I mean, you know, so that is par for the course, I guess, in some cases when you talk about extreme wide receivers that did things differently in their own ways, you know, to get shine and things like that. Um, but that still was seemingly stuff around football, right? Like drawing attention in the game. Like this dude, like, threw a bike at the security guard at the place he was staying. You know, he wanted to fight the movers. This dude's verbally assaulting and throwing, like, candy at his baby mama about the kids. Like, <laughs> there's just some choices that, you know, you, you kind of step back and look at where maybe there's some adulting that needs to happen. You know, someone needs to be saying, like, okay, now, however he is, however, however old he is now. 33. And, so football is coming to an end for you. Anyway, what what are you, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna be on someone's TV show. You know what I mean? No, I mean the album is cracking. So, <laughs> so he's gonna have to get up with Sean <laughs> Kingston and whoever oh, else. Anyway. And it looks God, no, it looks like uh, ra rapping. It looks like uh, what was the title of the album? No, what white white chicks or something like that? Yeah, I, I don't know. But but that's what it's seeming like. You know, you're limiting you're limiting your options. So let's say it's not a cry for help. But it is a cry for for some leadership, someone to sit down and talk to you. And then my question to you is, I mean, the, the short answer is nobody, right? Because we all have to be of self, right, and, and do some. But is there any responsibility from Tom, the NFL, the NFL PA, or, you know, anyone to kind of like reach out to him, pull him aside, 
say, hey, bro, you good? You know, sometimes we, we need to just like, I mean, we've done this on the show or even after the show, like, oh, bro, like talk to me. You know what I mean? So is yeah. there anybody's responsibility? Or do you think that's not a move that needs to happen? Uh, Sure. I, but I don't think, or, I mean, we don't know if that hasn't already happened, right? Uh, I mean, that phrase, you good, can mean a lot of different things, right? Especially from Texas. You good? Yeah, I mean. You good? Let me hold It could be, you good? Like, <laughs> you good? You trying to try me? Or like. Not you good? We got issues? <laughs> all right. I mean, Mike Evans at one point during Sunday, he was like, hey, all right, man, you hey, good. Damn. You good. All right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to t- calm you down, but you good. Do whatever you got to do, bro. So like. I love what you do, bro. Um, I, I think those things have probably already happened. Uh, I know there's a lot of different resources that you can get to in the NFL. And even if the NFL per se didn't provide those, um, you got a place of influence that you can kind of, you know, some people around you are, you could touch people maybe than more than the, 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 the common person exactly. could. Right. right. So um, I think there's, there has to be some self accountability and, to your point, you know, there has to be a point where AB is like, okay, this is what I need to do. If that's what he needs to do to get some help. Um, I don't wouldn't put anything on Tom Brady. Tom Brady's a grown man, just like AB is a 33-year-old grown man. Um, I think NFL is a place of employment that provides things for its employees. Um, if somebody else can get help, then I'm sure AB had those same opportunities to get help. You know, whether he comes, whether he feels like he needs it, whether he has a support system to your point that can say, hey, man, maybe you need something to do this. Um, I think you touched on an even bigger point is like, hey, man, your career is coming to an end. And I think I I think what we didn't point out, what you point out so greatly and what you just said was, hey, in, in 2018, you know, he had been balling up with the, you know, the Steelers and was on the top of the mountain. Then, hey, here comes Juju. So you find yourself being a little bit more replaceable. Um, and then that light at the, that was way at the end of the tunnel uh, and your career is a little closer now because you're 33 years old. You are already you being replaced. Next to you. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you about to do next? Um, right. And I think there's some real, you know, some real reality into that that might be setting in for a B that, hey, uh, I'm not really sure what to do next, man. This has been my grind since I was 10 years old or whatever. This is what I do best. We saw a booby miles on Sunday night. Uh, of, uh, what's golly? What why I say Sunday night? Uh, I have no idea. Friday night lights. Friday, <laughs> I was thinking something else. Uh, on Friday night know. lights, he he cried. You know, like all I can do is play football. You know, <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do? 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 That's not funny. But that's I think that's not funny at all. It's just hilarious. <laughs> it is. It is funny. Uh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What uh, you sound old make it on the ball. I, 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 yeah. Again. <laughs> and all but, we had was his uncle, right? All so, he had was his uncle. Yeah. And and the doctor from Midland that's in him or who sent you, right? Whatever. So <laughs> right. Um but I think that's a reality, you know, all jokes aside, that hey, what are you gonna do next? You've been an expert at one part, you know, expert at one thing. Now it's like, hey. You got to find something else to do. And maybe that's a little bit of what AB is going through right now, too. Well, that transition's tough for the normal athlete, right? Like, I mean, that's what they talked about. You know, Ryan Clark was talking about Ben, you know, kind of wrapping up his last games, you know, uh, as we're taping this on Monday Night Football. And uh, the Steelers got that third win that I predicted in one of our other shows. But, you know, um, yeah. we'll see if they play out. <laughs> hey, keeping Tomlin at a, at a winning record was definitely one of the biggest things that I wanted. But anyway, um, for sure. That transition that tra- we talk about that, like most of our interviews, when we talk to former athletes, right? Like, or it comes up naturally. We don't even have to ask, you know, like when, you know, either it's cut short or, you know, what are you going to do? Like, how are you making that next move? And I think that's one thing that, you know, what's important and it's hard adjustment, no matter what level of the game that you play. Right. So, correct. So Tom then Brady still don't want to go home. Still he, don't want to go home. That boy playing till he 86 and he make it go home movies about it and like he's like i am not going home <laughs> not happening so um one thing's proposed i don't know if you've seen this flying around the internet the interwebs but uh they were like uh one of the paul brothers i don't know if it's jake or whatever his other brother is but uh, them two in a fight match up that could be some money for him would you with, be a, inter- with ab with ab yeah <laughs> would you be interested i don't think ab can fight so i don't know if it'd be another nate robinson situation 
Yeah, but, uh, AB don't do that, man. <laughs> hey, it's some money. Hey, he might need to. <laughs> he <laughs> might need to. He but, might uh, need to. Don't don't do that, man. Well, I mean, it's really, I don't know. I think I'm more to the fact that something's definitely wrong with the character. Um, you know, I, I just don't see this this level of continuous acts. Um, but then if you do want to relate it to um, people having issues, it's kind of like they talk about, um, you know, alcohol or drugs or even, you know, other things. It's when that person is ready. And until that person is ready, you know, no amount of hand holding or, or, or coming to or, or, or talk to people, you know, will help. So I know that's a part of it, but I just don't want us to see this to be like a Delonte West situation where we see this nigga at 7-Eleven, you know, with no shoes on, you know talking to himself so yeah i mean my dad said uh he just was like ab this looks like <laughs> like a dude that <laughs> owes somebody some money so like i hope he not into some some weird stuff where he got to do the extra to to pay a debt off uh hold on like a double dare like this nigga is like like listen nigga i bet you won't do this yeah he he's got just like, money on the line was like yeah he got some money on the line lose like lose to the jets whatever you need to do correct and like, I hope he's not into some other stuff. <laughs> As my oh. dad say, he looks like a dude that's just into some other, oh, somebody money. That's um, hilarious. Pop we'll just, always coming with yeah. you. <laughs> we're just very interested. I mean, he may just need to drop the AB and just be Antonio Brown for a little bit. Sometimes we get into these alter egos um, that, lose ourselves in them, <laughs> that right? kind of lose ourselves a little bit. So. You know, I, I think the Honey Badger dropped Honey Badger for a little bit. It was just like, hey, call me Tyron Matthew. <laughs> well, he didn't like it, Badger. Heard, though, right? What? The Honey Badger? I mean, he didn't like the name Honey Badger. Nah, I, 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 I'm I, not going to say he didn't like it. I mean, he started dyeing his hair and getting little slits in his eye. Yeah, he started doing Honey Badger type things. Maybe well, just, what do you, you, you got to drop that. Was like AB was doing, though. He looked like a damn yeah. walrus the one time he died. So he, <laughs> he, did, he, did, he, he, he put the blind <laughs> here. I don't know. Here. I mean. What the hell was like? He was going through something, man. So, but hey, expression <laughs> is a hell of a thing, right? So people feel free to express themselves. I guess my whole thing is I'm just, can we get him back to doing this? He needs to, did, did he lose a connection? That, Call God? Like that I part. He lost that connection. Like where, where is that at? Cause like, is, part. Is, is he sending God straight to voicemail? Like <laughs> he don't might he just DM God at this point, AB. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, leaving him text messages on red or something. I don't know what the fuck him is. He, his, this, need to, this is what he needs to pick back the hell up. So drop AB and, and, and call God. AOL God, we got to fix the AOL God. We got to fix the communication or something. <laughs> like, I don't know if God changed the number on him. I don't know what's going on, but this, <laughs> we, we need that back. But tag God. Yeah, really. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, it's. It's funny, though, and we got that kind of reaction, man. So people, like I said, I think I'm just coming from, you know, a total different um, belief and in, in, in hoping that everything's okay and then hoping that he has some support systems because, like, I know that's what helps me be successful in life and maybe no one's taught him that or, you know, sometimes ego gets in the way for us to reach out and say, I need help. I think that's one of the hardest things is to, to just really say, I need help and, and not feel a certain type of way. But um, I just I, <laughs> I definitely just want to see the memes of pray for for AB and not the dude sitting on the side of a plane and <laughs> say it's always a half day when you leave early. Like all the kind of the memes we got, man. What's your final thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, I, I, I agree with you. Um, more than anything, I we don't know AB personally, um, so. I don't know what he's going through or what was done on the sideline in this instance or anything of that nature. Um, you know, I, I would just, as somebody that's lived in life similar to the time, uh, time period AB has, uh, you know, just don't burn all your bridges, bro. Like, you know, at a certain point in time, man, you're going to need some, some lifelines and you need somebody to call on. And, um, I hope you just don't disconnect all those, uh, those, those people that can can touch you and can just be somebody to talk to if you need somebody, right? So, um, you know, maybe maybe not burn all the bridges and keep moving, stay healthy, uh, take care of your family, be an example for your kids. Be it. There it is. Well, 
another episode of the locker room, man, which is a special episode. Just uh, we had to bring it to the table because that's just definitely we've talked about. Um, well, definitely the Steelers, Mike Tomlin, and just a b in some some cases so we had to bring that to light man so please give us your thoughts in the comments or definitely we, we post it on social media it's all good to have fun but like i said i hope he's all right and like uh ma said man i hope he's not burning his bridges uh but thank you for uh hopping on to listen to it. i hope you enjoyed the show uh please stay safe practice gratitude and know we're rooting for you screaming all us blacks got his sports and entertainment until we even Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yo. 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 Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Spat about two racks on handmade new rags. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. That's everybody from sports to college class to rap and back.